All right, I'll uh, read our prepared statement, and uh, then we'll answer some questions after that. Uh, good afternoon. Five months ago in this very room, uh, with members of the media to discuss the completion of the Seneca Nation's 14-year uh, payment obligation under the compact, that same morning, Governor Como asked me directly in a telephone conversation if I would be willing to meet with him and discuss the situation. I said yes. I have uh, repeated the willingness for five months. Five months have gone by with no meeting. We had a meeting scheduled for late July. That meeting was canceled by the governor on short notice. We thought we were heading towards a meeting for August 8th. That date was ultimately pulled off the table by the governor. And we had a meeting scheduled for today to the point that my staff did a walkthrough in Niagara Falls uh, with his security detail. Again, the governor canceled using the crutch of allegations unrelated to the compact issue. Through all the insults, the canceled meetings, the threats, the smoke and mirrors, the facts remain perfectly clear. The compact spells out a 14-year payment obligation for the nation. That obligation has been fulfilled and now ended. The compact is still in effect and the nation's exclusive exclusivity remains. The compact is enforceable by federal law. The Seneca Nation remains in compliance with the language of the compact. With that, I'll happy to answer some questions. President Gates, your reaction to reports that the Cuomo administration is threatening to open its own gambling facility in Niagara Falls if casino revenue payments aren't resumed? That's a clear violation of the compact. And what recourse would the nation have if that were to happen? The compact is enforceable under federal law. The governor did not address media here, but he did in, in Rochester, and he brought up that he didn't want to say too much because of uh, an issue with the Erie County DA's office. Can you discuss what's happening there? Uh, we have an attorney retained to uh, look into the matter. And, uh, if uh, Dennis would like to answer that. Sure. Thank you very much. Um, so in February, late February of this year, the Seneca Nation uh, retained uh, me and my firm uh, to conduct an internal investigation into some allegations concerning an incident that occurred at the Buffalo Creek Casino last August. Uh, we conducted a thorough and extensive investigation uh, into those allegations. Uh, sometime in early spring, uh, we approached the Erie County District Attorney's Office uh, with the intention of giving them a high-level overview of the findings of our probe. Uh, at that time, I informed uh, the DA's office and state police investigators uh, that I thought that this whole matter was much to do about nothing, uh, not necessarily a legal phrase, but that there was, uh, our findings had indicated that there was no indication of criminal conduct. Um, we discussed at that time uh, the fact that I would want to present our findings to the State Gaming Commission. Uh, I connected with the executive director of the Gaming Commission, uh, Robert Williams, in uh, late May, uh, wherein I described to him, uh, again, in general, uh, the uh, outcome of our investigation. And I suggested to him certain next steps, if you will, uh, as a means of resolving whatever dispute existed between the State Gaming Commission and the State, the Seneca Gaming Authority. Uh, Mr. Williams told me that he would get back to me, uh, despite several attempts to reach him after the last week of May. Uh, the next time I was able to speak to him was the last week of July, two weeks, two months after uh, my initial contact with him. And disappointingly, at that time, Mr. Williams uh, uh, conveyed to me the impression that he was hearing for the first time uh, the information that I was again providing to him and had provided to him uh, two months earlier. Uh, ironically, somewhat uh, uh, coincidentally perhaps, uh, but disturbingly to me, is that yesterday afternoon uh, between 3.30 and 4 o'clock, I made another phone call to Mr. Williams uh, to discuss with him again uh, our findings in the context of the internal investigation that I was commissioned to conduct. Uh, disappointingly, uh, once again, no response, uh, but it was within 45 minutes of that phone call uh, that there was a press report announcing uh, or disclosing 
a confidential investigation by the district attorney's office. Uh, I'm very disappointed in that disclosure. Um, there's, there's absolutely no public record or public filing of, of surrounding this investigation, and I think that it's highly inappropriate for the governor or his staff uh, to have leaked this information about this investigation. Um, to the extent there is an investigation, frankly, I'm not so sure that the Erie County District Attorney's Office has an active, ongoing investigation uh, to the extent that they've uh, subpoenaed any records or uh, uh, talked to any witnesses uh, other than an initial interview way back uh, several months ago. Uh, so I think that the, really the, the unfortunate circumstances here is that the governor and his staff are now attempting to use this non-investigation, in my estimation, uh, this, this non-occurrence uh, as a wedge, as a bargaining chip, and it really is, it's disappointing because of the disclosure of the investigation, and I'm not even, I'm not suggesting in the slightest that the disclosure came from the Erie County District Attorney's Office. I believe that the disclosure uh, by, by my uh, review of the uh, media accounts yesterday and by virtue of the juxtaposition uh, with my phone call to the governor's uh, top guy at the State Gaming Commission that the disclosure of this so-called investigation came from the governor's office. Uh, the Seneca Nation, which is a sovereign entity, has every right to expect that when they are dealing with the district attorney's office or with the governor's office, that they are dealing with the state of New York. And while the governor's office and the Erie County DA's office might think that there's a distinction in the context of the sovereign rights of the Seneca Nation, there is no difference. They are dealing with the state of New York. And it's very disappointing to me, uh, and I know it's very disappointing to President Gates and to the uh, entire council, uh, that the governor has now, in this fashion, uh, blown up a long scheduled meeting, not the first time he's done so, but blown up a meeting uh, using this excuse, the excuse of this investigation, as a means to avoid meaningful discussion with Seneca Nation over the compact. Uh, the citizens of New York State, citizens of Erie County should expect more. They should expect more than political posturing around an alleged criminal investigation uh, from its governor, and unfortunately, uh, we don't have that today. The governor mentioned that um, your right to exclusive uh, gaming is gone because of not abiding by the terms of the compact. How do you respond to that? You need to read the compact. It's very clear. Our obligation ended after 14 years, and if he wants to put a casino in our exclusivity zone, that's a clear violation, again, by the state. The first one was a, a negotiated settlement because the state violated the compact and wanted to settle out of it. Mr. President, what would you think about the economic viability of any other casino that the state might sponsor, say, in Niagara Falls or even Buffalo? It'll do poorly. Market saturated. I think a lot of people know that. Even the new casinos they put out there are not doing up to their ex expectations. So. And are you aware that the governor doubled down this afternoon on his uh, intention to seek such a development? Yes, I heard that statement. Uh, be foolish. What action would you take? Uh, the compact is enforceable under federal law. Uh, those uh, compacts are being approved by the Interior Department. And that's where we're going to get it settled. He hasn't made a claim about our violation of the compact, so there is none. You know, we have a valid compact, and it is enforceable. Where, could you characterize, or maybe Dennis, you can, the, where this discrepancy between the 14-year term seems to be? I mean, it, you're, you're describing it as a very simple, it was to, to extend 14 years. And That's obviously it. there's a discrepancy on the other side. I, the governor would have to answer that. I mean, uh, the, the language is there. It's clear language. We said that all along. Uh, I think it's been interpreted by uh, many of the news organizations that a, tr a plain reading of the compact shows our obligation and that ended. What do you think will happen next? I don't know, it's up to the state. We, we're, we're fine. We don't need to meet with the governor. 
the compact's in place. Uh, if he wants to violate it, uh, then we'll uh, we'll have to do something then. You know, I think he's uh, threatened arbitration, but we'll have to see where it goes. Who's going to reach out now so that if there was supposed to be a meeting today, it didn't happen? Are you going to extend the hand and say, let's do this soon? No. I mean, we've extended our hand. Uh, the governor wants to play uh, politics on it. Uh, this whole allegations over the investigation that they knew about it a year ago. It's over a year old, and uh, they knew about it. President Gates, you uh, uh, you welcome arbitration on this, and, and how do you get there? Uh, there has to be a violation. Right now, there is none. Uh, if the state wants to violate it with their uh, putting a casino next to ours, and that's a, that'll start the our uh, object of the violation of the compact. And uh, you know, they can you know, I, I can't control what the governor does. You know. And All I can say is there was an eclipse yesterday. Maybe it changed his uh, attitude. Um, what would the next step be on any kind of uh, uh, fees to host communities? Uh, would that come directly from the Senecas? Uh, how, how do you see that? That's the governor's obligation under the compact. They need to, the communities need to go talk to the governor. He's the one driving this whole thing. Have you ever met him? I've uh, met him, uh, just meet and greets. Uh, actually expressed to him that we need to sit down and talk about some things, but uh, nothing's ever happened. You know, talked to him on the phone, told him we could meet, set some dates, and uh, you know, keeps backing out. Why, why the, the media briefing today then? <coughs> I mean, you don't want to meet with the governor. Um, you, you feel that you're in the, in the right, and I mean, what, what's the point of we're clarifying the allegations made against Seneca Nation. Uh, it's disparaging us all the time. I'm mad for the Seneca Nation. You know, the statements he keeps making out there are uh, false. He needs to look at who violated what. You know, we didn't violate the compact the last time he did. And, uh, you know, he does all this posturing. I don't know. I think he has aspirations for a higher office. People have to look at him and the way he's at conducting himself now. So Tim, if I, if, if I may just add to that, I think that it was, it was uh, important for us uh, to address the allegations concerning an investigation. Um, if I haven't made myself perfectly clear, I want to reiterate that uh, whatever the DA's office is up to, um, that information was inappropriately leaked um, by all accounts um, and while I don't have a source inside the governor's office to confirm precisely who was the leaker, uh, by all accounts of how this unfolded yesterday, it is clear to me that the leak came from the governor's office. It's inappropriate. It's wrong. The, the leak overstated the circumstances, uh, created the impression that there is that there was eavesdropping, which was ongoing, which the district attorney's office knows from my investigation as I disclosed to them is not accurate um, and at the end of the day it's it's being used uh, as as a weak and unfortunate shield from getting down and doing the tough work of negotiating with the Seneca Nation it is a, it is a lame excuse to hide behind a non-investigation even if it is an investigation it is an investigation into de minimis circumstances the governor and his people know that, and certainly the DA's office knows it as well. So the, hot, the purpose why we're here today principally is to, to underscore the fact that <coughs> the, the excuse for not meeting with the nation is really a subterfuge. Thanks, everybody. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you.